autonomy is an illusion. And that's the intro that leads into, I don't remember if I updated this or not. Is this episode 21 or 22? I don't, I don't remember. I don't remember if I updated that or not. It's, it's another we can, episode. We can double check. Yeah, we can figure that out eventually. Well, you uh, keep talking. I'm going to figure that out right yeah, now. Please do, because that's going to bother me now. But this is, in fact, another episode, the next one. Uh, the, this the one is after- episode... 21 okay sweet so we nailed it we did good we did good um so it's 21 which comes after 20 which that comes after 19 this is 21 of fans of the weast with your hosts Durf and dylan uh for just to catch everybody up here the seahawks and bills are obviously no longer participating in the nfl this season so uh we had four teams which were the Bengals against the Chiefs and the Niners against the Eagles last 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 weekend in the championship games, and it was quite interesting to say the least. Um, I, I I walked away from watching the championship games like not feeling good, you know? Right. Like I didn't I didn't feel like I sat there and like watched any good football like at any point that i was just like wow that was like mm-hmm. because in the eagles game it felt like i'm not gonna i don't want to get like conspiracy theory that's not what i'm saying but like every call was going against the 49ers like the 49ers defense was holding the eagles offense for a lot of the time but then like on their on their second touchdown drive where they went up 14 nothing it was like or maybe it was 14-7 at that point. There were, what, three defensive holding penalties on third down? Like, it just seems like every single time they got a penalty that went their way. I'm not saying, like, I'm not going I'm just saying, like, that they were good calls, too. Like, they would replay it. It's a good call. It's just how it was. So, like, I didn't feel good about that. And it ended up being a blowout anyways because, you know, Brock Purdy gets hurt. Freaking Josh Johnson's in an NFC championship game. He gets hurt. Purdy comes back in who apparently tore his UPL. Uh, They're not UPL, UCL? UCL, yeah. Yeah, UPL's the goalie. (laughs) UPL's the Sabres goalie (laughs) who was getting torched tonight. Um yeah, so he tore his UCL, so he's out for like at least six months. Um, it was just a disastrous football game. Like the, by the time the game ended, I was just like, I even put it on Twitter. I was like, "Wow, that was like a really fun Week Four game." Oh wait, nope, that was the championship game. Wow, that's fun. <laughs> and then we get to the Chiefs and Bengals, and obviously, we had some good football in that one, <laughs> but overall, again, all you feel like walking away is just. Like, the refs got too involved sometimes. Right. It just, there, was a, there was a little bit of that, yeah. Like, the very weird scenario where they tried the, the blow the uh, blow the play dead on third down, and the Chiefs don't convert, <laughs> yeah. and then, like, oh, we got to replay the down because it was technically blown dead, which I'm fine with. I'm not sitting here saying that's the wrong call. It's just a weird right. circumstance. Like, whenever people see weird things, mm-hmm. they assume it's, like, a conspiracy. It's not a conspiracy. It's just weird. It doesn't happen very often. Right. You know, um, and then people are obviously taking like slow motion stills of everything for the next week on social media. Like, oh, there was a hold. <laughs> if you didn't see it live during the game, you can't just come back yep. like six days later and be like, oh, look, this was a hold. <laughs> cool beans, dude. Like it's five days later and you've been watching uh, you've been watching the game film for five days and like you're now you're picking apart holds. That's not really. You know, that's, that's, it's a stupid, right. Stupid argument. And then, uh, obviously like apparently Lane Johnson was jumping off sides for the Eagles, like the entire day, (laughs) (laughs) which I saw, I made note of that during a game. It was funny. After Uh I went on Twitter, I saw other people agreeing with that. I didn't post it or anything. I just saw other people saying like, is Lane Johnson jumping off, like jumping false stars, like every single snap. 
It's like, oh, I'm glad I'm not the only one because I saw that too. It was very weird. Right. I think I audibly said one time, like, oh, there's a false start. And the play just kept going. I was like, oh, okay. Well, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> Uh, what, what were your feelings on the game, on the games? Uh, uh Bengals 49ers was a disappointment. Um, I thought I was very surprised that the refs did not stop the play after the huge Devonta Smith catch. Oh, yeah. Like, that was early game changing the outcome kind of play. It's fourth down. It leads to a touchdown later. That's a, that right, was a like, very big, big it, pickup. Yeah, and like we don't. We, and then we see the replay like a minute later after the touchdown. Oh, it actually wasn't a catch. Like, why did we not just stop the game then? Yeah. Like, who do you blame like, more? Like, I, I feel like I can't blame Shanahan because like uh, his staff can only move so fast to try and get different angles. But then like. But the right. NFL but should like have been it, able to stop it. Yeah, NFL officiating, like the head court, like the the higher up officiating, like they have those angle feeds fed to them, like immediately. Like yeah. they had the ability to stop that game. Um, and like Mike Prayer, or was it Gene Steratore said, like, oh well, they didn't get that angle right away. Bullshit. Right, like, you you're in Central yeah. NFL Central command. You right. have every angle immediately. Don't tell me you didn't have that angle right away. That's right. a bold faced lie and you know it. Uh-huh. That's like the one thing where I'm like, wow, that's weird. I, I will agree with that. Like it just seemed interesting, like that they didn't stop it that game when like in the wild card round the Bills were getting like every big catch, like the game was stopping. Hence why we had a four hour game. Right. Yep. Like uh, sums a little up there. And then there was a similar catch in the Chiefs Bengals game. Uh, was it May? Was it a Tony? Kadarius Tony, oh, I think. Yeah. Big touchdown yep. catch downfield, big pass. Yep. And they, they stopped, stopped and the reviewed game. that one. Yep. So like, what made this one different? Like, yeah, I know the Eagles hurried to the line, but I'm surprised just like Devonta Smith getting up and like trying to tell everyone to hurry up, like didn't raise some red flags right. to literally yeah. anybody. Like not the NFL, like just blow a whistle real quick. Yeah. Let's get this figured out. This seems a little weird. Yeah. It, yeah. Again, I just reiterate again. Like it just felt like I walked away from the championship weekend. Like no one's talking about the football. No one's talking mm-hmm. about football. Like how they played. What did Jalen do? What? Did, how did the offenses perform? Did the defenses step up? No one's talking about that. Everyone's just like, wow, look at this missed call. Look at this. Oh, they should have done that. Oh, refs did this. Like, right. It doesn't feel good. It sucks. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so like, yeah, Eagles, 49ers. It's very, I think it's really unfortunate for Brock Purdy to uh, basically snap his UCL. Um, I haven't heard any more on that, what they found out to. Uh, what the damage was and how much it's going to affect the 49ers. But it's, uh, you know, for one of our number one fans, Danny boy there, I think it's, uh, it's got, as long as he can heal, right. I think he's got a bright future there behind Trey Lance. It's, it's weird though, isn't it? Yeah. It's like, they, they did say like here, I, for some reason I got the entire 49ers breakdown for you for quarterbacks, at least. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. I just been seeing a lot of 49ers stuff for some reason. <laughs> like Trey Lance should be ready to go for like training camp. Uh-huh. So he's like, he'll be the, the guy starting because he'll be mm-hmm. basically be the only one healthy. Um, and then Brock Purdy, they said about six months for his recovery. So that yep. puts us like after training camps, like he might be able to take like preseason it, snaps. Right. So it'll he won't get as much time with the teams and that Trey Lance are all going to be Trey Lance snaps. And then uh, they also said that Jimmy G is, is gone. Like, he's a free yeah. agent. He's, I, th- I think it was uh, John Lynch who came and during his press conference today said, they are going to be, they are bringing in a third quarterback. They will mm-hmm. do that. They didn't say how. Like if it was gonna be a veteran or a draft pick or something like that, but Jimmy right. G is not it. He's 
He's gone. I don't know if he pissed oh, someone he's... off or this is just like their plan all along, but he is gone. He is gone. And they were very uh, clear about that. He's probably going to the Raiders. They were, they're probably pissed that Tom retired. We didn't even talk about that. They're probably pissed Tom retired. They're like, yeah, we're going to get right. rid of Jimmy G and bring Tom in. And he's retired. Son of a bitch. <laughs> <laughs> Happy retirement, Tom, by the way. Uh, we'll see you uh, this season when you unretire and play for Miami. Yep. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I don't. Uh, I don't. I don't know if this is gonna. This one's gonna stick or not. We'll see what happens. I liked his video though. Like he was just like, he, like you got the long speech right. thing last season. Uh, I can only do that once. It was kind of funny. Like I'm not. I can't mm-hmm. do like the long, written up retirement speech anymore. So instead, here's a video. I'm retiring. Um. Okay. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> like, I like that because I hate those long retirement things too. Like I don't read that shit. No right. one does. I feel like they'd post these long drawn out stories or like pictures with like a speech on it. And mm-hmm. people just go, yeah, he retired. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't not really say anything like people are just like, Oh, yep. That's a retirement speech. All right, cool. He's, he's gone. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, happy retirement, Tom. I guess he was just looking at Miami schools because I guess that's where he wants to retire. He's going to be a Miami man now. I mean, it's not not a terrible idea. That's where most people go to retire, so maybe yeah. he'll move into one of those swinger neighborhoods. I mean, he's not married anymore, <laughs> so maybe just crash some parties, you know, look for those pineapples. Uh, look for those pineapples. Yeah. <laughs> that's going to be Tommy for the rest of his life. <laughs> imagine imagine uh, Tom Brady crashing your swinger party. Holy cow. Tom Swinger Brady. Wow, that would be something special. That'd be that'd be awesome. <laughs> um, um, yeah. So where were yeah. we with football? <laughs> <laughs> so 49ers Eagles was a disappointment, as I I kind of thought. Mm-hmm. Um, and then Bengals Chiefs, a little bit more of an exciting game, but not a ton. Um, I think. For a Bills fan, it was slightly frustrating because of, of how easy the Chiefs got to Joe Burrow. Yeah, like when they sacked him like four times in their first like three the first, drives the, or something. Yeah, it was something ridiculous. I'm like, they're tearing them apart. The Bills couldn't do that at all. Yeah, not to mention but, they're playing press man coverage the entire game, right? Instead of playing like ten yards off. Hmm. Like, yeah. it was just very interesting to see how the Chiefs um, played against the Bengals differently. Uh, I'm kind of glad the Chiefs won. Um, karma is uh, it's not nice when you uh, get a big ego and a big head on your tiny body and can't support it. So Eli Apple has gone completely radio <laughs> silent on social media. He hasn't posted yeah. he, he retweeted something three days ago but uh-huh. outside of that retweet he has said nothing since the mm-hmm. game yeah yeah talk a big game and then you lose and then you disappear you little bitch mm-hmm. little bitch man <laughs> yeah but yeah i mean it was a uh, it was definitely down to the wire um you know with the bucker kicking the field goal and I feel like the slight inexperience of the Bengals showed up in that final drive for the Chiefs when Osai pushes Joe Burrow down out, out of bounds. Yeah. And and then and then gets hurt. Like a veteran player on defense would know to okay, let up, make sure he goes out of bounds, but mm-hmm. don't do anything. You know, to and like, I think it was Eli. It was like right in front of Patrick too. Yeah. So like he he like had his blinders on and didn't even like obviously he's gonna go out of bounds because Eli's right in front of him. I don't have to do right. anything. Yep. Yeah. I mean, it's like Osai was having a good game too. That's the thing. Like his final yeah. stats were like three solo tackles, five total, like a tackle for loss, like a couple of quarterback hits. Like he was having a good day. Mm-hmm. And then just like all that's washed away because. Right, you made, you made a bad play at the end there. It's very unfortunate. Yeah. But yeah, that's uh, I don't know. There was, there was football was had, and uh, <laughs> I watched most of it, but 
<laughs> I, I watched all of it, but I wasn't proud yeah. that I watched all of it. It was, I like, I just can't, I can't shake that feeling. It was just so weird that like we yeah. watched two championship games and I was just like, I just didn't care. Like I was just, it was such a weird feeling. Right. And it's like, all right, there's our Super Bowl matchup. Cool beans, yeah. I guess. Like it's so weird. Um, right. Just to recap, uh, Durf did have the Bengals versus the Niners in the Super Bowl. And I had the Chiefs and Eagles completely flip flopped, and look who came out. I just picked. I, I just picked the loser. That's all. That's all. That's it. You know, <laughs> one of us went one hundred percent, and the other one went zero percent. You know, it's yeah. No, that <laughs> evens out to fifty uh, percent there. So, kind of looks <laughs> yeah. like my high school grades. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we we have obviously our every year gap. Um, between mm-hmm. you know the Super Bowl, we have to deal with like shit like the Pro Bowl, which we will get to in a second. Before we get to football that's happening next week and the following week, uh, we just mm-hmm. want to quickly get to a little bit of the meat here of the Seahawks and the Bills. You know, once your season ends, the rumors start swirling. People start talking about like what the plans are for the off season. You don't get any solid plans, obviously. They're just getting you know press conferences and stuff like right. that. Right, but you know. We just kind of want to see what we're hearing or, you know, what we kind of think the plan should be moving forward, some targets, stuff like that. Um, mm-hmm. And Durf is a big mock draft guy, so we will get to that when the time comes. <laughs> I yep, hate mock time. drafts. Like, we could not be <laughs> two different people when it comes to, like, the draft. I just right. show up on draft day and see what happens. Mm-hmm. Durf is just like, I'm going to run 16 mock drafts and see – uh, and compare everybody else's mock drafts to my mock draft and come up with the most popular player for each team and then do my own research about who the holy fuck who's got the time for this uh, i you mean might i might not have the time this year i might not have time for that this year we will see, yeah but, uh. yeah that's gonna that's gonna be a toughie right there we'll see what happens i'll just make uh, my own and say yep i uh this is it this is, yeah, just just run one real quick. Yep, that's it. Yeah, no comparisons, no nothing. Just like there it is. Do with it what you will. I think that's what Mel Kuyper does anyway, so he'll be fine. As long as you get like more than two right, you're better than him. There you go. You do it for free. Uh, it sucks. Right. Um. So, yeah, we got the Bills and Seahawks. Just kind of our general feeling about what we should be doing this offseason. Um, the Seahawks have a pretty rebuildy looking offseason plan. Mm-hmm. I don't think there's a lot of mystery here. The only mystery is what's going to happen with Gino. Everyone wants to know if they're going to re-sign Gino long-term, short-term, franchise tag, or if they're going to let him walk. No one knows. Um, and I think people have their opinions, but the Seahawks do it. Generally, the organization does a good job of like not n- telling anyone what their plan is. Mm-hmm. Um, so the Seahawks just have like a bunch of cap space. I think they're like a top five team in cap space come this coming off season. Like they have a shit ton of money that they can work with. Um, and they have a lot of free agents like dead meat that they can drop off that they can replace. You know, like LJ Collier, he's been on this team for like four years, and I think he's played three snaps. The dude sucks. Get him out of here. Uh, we got a lot of – we signed a couple of like one-year people like Jonathan Abram. We don't need him. Tanner Muse, he's a good special team guy. We don't need him. They can make a decision on Cody Barton. His rookie deal is up. You may even give him his fifth-year deal. But there's a lot of places. Uh, Travis Homer, another running, running back that like – gets hurt immediately every season. They can make their decision with Rashad Penny. His uh, contract is also up. They have a lot of decisions to make on some of these mm-hmm. guys, but it's a lot of decisions where you could free up a lot of cap space, and, com- and this is how you rebuild a team. This is when it happens. A lot of cap space, and you get rid of the the, the dead meat uh, cap space with players you just don't need or they're injury prone. Uh, so I say we take that money and... I think a lot of this leads to what you do with Gino, which for me personally is a 50, 50 coin flip. If you can get him for like the quarterback franchise value of like 32 to 34 million a season. Okay. We'll make it work. I guess I'm not a huge fan, but like, cause that'll be just like a little under half of what we have for cap space this year. If we do 32, 34, mm-hmm. but if he's going to be like, if he's in those negotiations saying I want 40, no, I'm not. I'm not about that. I mean, I mean, I know we had a great season, but we can't handicap our rebuild and our future by signing a 33 year old Geno Smith again to 40 million a year. Right. That's tough. 
Uh, so I'd rather see that money goes towards these things specifically. Uh, one, a veteran wide receiver three. And I think your biggest boom or bust potential here mm-hmm. is Michael Thomas. Yeah. Like if, if you can manage, you get him out of New Orleans, which obviously he does not like being there. Mm-hmm. He is like, he's always hurt, whether he's pretending to be hurt, whatever the situation is, he's not playing. <laughs> get him out of there. Get him in some fresh scenery. You know, Pete Carroll does great with all these veteran wide receivers that come in. Like, they just love him. I say go and get Michael Thomas. And maybe you can even get him for cheap because he doesn't play anymore. And I think he will be a great yak slot wide receiver because the Seahawks do not have that. Um, so I think that's a great target personally. But overall, the we just need a solid wide receiver three. Um, we need to fix the offensive line in the interior part of it mostly. They can bring back Ethan Posick. I feel like he was an okay center. If I think we target a center in the draft, obviously, but we need to get rid of Blythe. He's also a free agent, so we'll lose Blythe. That's fine. He was like one of the worst centers in the league this season uh, by PFF. We can just bring back po- Posick. Just bring him back so you have a solid veteran piece right there, and he already knows the system. He's ready to go. I think that would be a great option as long as you know Cleveland doesn't resign him. And then um, also guards. Bring them all in. Bring in every free agent guard that wants to come. I don't I don't give a shit who they are. Just br- we need competition and depth at the guard position because holy shit, our guards suck. And that's why run game struggles. That's why Gino gets sacked when we play good defenses. It all comes mm-hmm. from the interior because God they all sucked. Um mm-hmm. So I say bring it, and then the same that, that kind of goes hand in hand with linebackers. If you are going to give Cody Barton his fifth year option, it's going to be a prove it year for him, and you need to give him competition. That means bring in veteran linebackers, uh, so you can do that. And then obviously pass rush, pass rush improve down the stretch for Seattle, but uh, they need they need more, they need more boom. So if you want to bring in another one, there's a couple of good names out there. Like you got uh, Van Noy is one option. You got Justin Houston, Melvin Ingram. Mm-hmm. There's ed, there's Ed Rusher options out there, and you can pair them nicely with Uchenna Nuosu, who had a fantastic season um, coming in as a free agent last year. So I, I trust Pete and John to find the right Ed Rusher because they found Uchenna. So I think they can – I'll let them pick who, and whoever they pick – I'll be fine with it because I, it'll probably be a good choice. I trust them. I mean, they had they brought in Clowney who played well. Then they bring uh, they got Frank Clark in, and then they bring in you know Uchenna. They just know they they're good with edge rushers. They generally can draft and bring in free agents well at that position, but like only one. We can't have like three like two or three good ones at once. We can only have one at a time. So maybe right <laughs> that, that's the part that sucks. Um, <laughs> so that's kind of like my game plan for him. And then when it comes mm-hmm. to the draft, like I think the entire draft needs to go into the trenches, like offensive and defensive line, and then maybe a linebacker. And then if you want, like in the seventh round, you want to go and see if you can find like, yeah. a diamond in the rough wide receiver. F- fuck, go for it. I don't care. But like the meat of your draft needs to be guard, center, interior, defensive line. That needs to be the focus. If you spend your first five draft picks on just that mission mm-hmm. accomplished. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's kind of my roadmap. You know, I, I feel like it's pretty straightforward for the Seahawks. You have a bunch of money, a bunch of draft picks, go do it. Uh, expectations are so nice. low in my opinion. I mean, <laughs> like we made the playoffs, but mm-hmm. I mean, at the end of the day, expectations are still low during any form of rebuild which the Seahawks are still in. So whatever they decide to do, still a rebuild. Just got to always keep that in mind. But that's what makes things fun. That's a fun off season right. or rebuilds because you bring in all these fun new faces. You got mm-hmm. a bunch of cap space so you can bring in like a big fun wide receiver, like a cool, like a cool pass rusher, like someone with a big name with big potential. They get to do, they get to have an off season like that. And it's very exciting. So I'm excited. Um, But the Bills are in a little bit different situation. Yeah, a little bit. Um, I think the big thing in the next about uh, six weeks, um, ironically six weeks, 
Um, is the Bills have to make some room to get under the cap. Uh, even though the salary cap number for 2023 uh, went up, I think, 8% from last year. So we're at $224.8 million um, for the season, and the Bills are currently sitting right around 247 So that's, that's not big. good. Yeah, they, Brandon Bean got his hands tied a little bit here to uh, to make things happen. So it, it's going to be a lot of roster moves, I think, in the next uh, couple weeks, especially, especially at the Super Bowl um, with the whole franchise tag thing going on uh, end of February, beginning of March. Um, because technically all, all teams have to be under the cap uh, by the league new year. So it's going to be interesting. Um, there are a couple things I think the Bills need to look at for player play, for player personnel here uh, on the defense, especially before they start cutting too many guys um, to make up some cap uh, to make to make up some cap space. Um, and the big thing that's been kind of going on rumor wise is. Uh, do the Bills franchise tag Tremaine Edmonds, which would be $21 million, or do they franchise tag Jordan Poyer, uh, for, which would be which would cost them $14 million. All in all, I think they tag, they tag Edmonds and pay Poyer uh, to try and keep both on the team for now. Yeah, I was going to say, you really think they do that? That, that's, that, this is my... This is what I'm thinking if they can create enough cap space in order to do it. If they can't yeah. create cap space, then I think Poyer stays and Edmund goes. I would agree with that. I think I think you gotta go one more year with Micah Hyde and Trent and Jordan Poyer in the in the safety spots. Or they stay and, healthy. Yep. <laughs> and hope that there's someone they can either Christian Benford, not Christian Benford, um, ter- uh, Terrell Bernard, who the Bills drafted, who didn't play half the year, uh, can take that next step, being a third round draft pick, and kind of start to fill in that Termin Edmonds spot, um, because obviously the Matt Milano needs somebody next to him to uh, cover the other third of the field because Matt Milano is covering two thirds. Fair. Um, <laughs> like, is it so, is it wrong of me to say like I don't want to offend anybody? Mm-hmm. Tremaine Edmonds is replaceable, and he is not a twenty one million dollar linebacker. No, I think he right, and I think he's absolutely replaceable. I think he's absolutely replaceable. He plays well. He plays well enough that he's going to demand a high contract from his agent, and the Bills are going to be like. Mm. It was nice knowing you. Yeah. Good luck in your future endeavors. I would agree. So, so that's why so, I, I feel that, like if they tagged Edmonds, that would be a huge mistake. Right. Like if anything, if you think you can negotiate something with Edmonds and you like tag Poyer, 14 is a little bit of a nicer name n- I mean, number yeah. for his, like what he can do. But like 21 for Edmonds is like, I don't I don't want to pay that. I it's <laughs> I wouldn't be happy doing that personally. Right. Um I forget how the tag money sticks to the salary cap. I feel like there's like there's some I feel like there's some kind of workaround or something, but um obviously Brandon Bean's gonna be, you know, reno renegotiating a lot of contracts, you know, and I see a lot of you know, um, like bonuses, just to try to take a lot of money off the board, mm-hmm. so they can create some uh, cap space. Because they, because on top of what the salary cap is right now, they need an additional. So even if they get to the salary cap, they still need another eight, just under eight million for the draft class. So. They've got so they, they really they got to clean up like thirty million dollars in in dead money right now. So they got That's they're gonna brutal. have a lot of ro- they're <laughs> gonna have a lot a lot of roster bonuses. Yeah, um, I'm sure Josh Allen will guess. do his part. Oh, I'm sure. Like, that's a guarantee. 
I mean, Singletary will be gone. I don't know yeah. if Diggs will take the pay cut. I don't know. He seems like wide receivers I, are weird like that. <laughs> right. I think if he did, he'd probably be one of the first ones to do that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Like um, Dawson Knox just got a pay increase. Like maybe he would do something for yeah. the team. I don't know. I will. I mean, it did, I guess it would depend on what the breakdown of the contract is for right. next year because more than likely a lot of these contracts are like team friendly early on and then become team unfriendly later and then that's where you're kind of like okay and we're done with you yeah we can avoid this contract now um so yeah so Edmonds and Poirier are gonna be big you know early in the next month or so uh early decisions so i think what they're gonna be able to do but it sounds like there's they're from what we have from the what rumors i heard early like a couple weeks ago, like, you know, as we're approaching the playoffs and into the playoffs, like there's more chance, I think of a deal getting done with Jordan Poor than there is Tremaine Edmonds. And that would make sense to me. That's so, um, so besides having to figure out those two players, um, this is kind of what we're, I've been hearing what I think should happen in this off season, uh, is that the bill should be targeting quality linemen not just whatever's on the board and you know in the open market uh on both sides of the ball minimally and i think minimally in free free agency being very selective in free agency but then drafting heavy ish um in that same area so i think tackles i think the bills are okay i would be looking at guard and center on the offense i think can use some help uh, who knows how much longer Mitch Morse is going to be there. So I would, would like to have a good, you know, center to be able to replace him. Um, but then D tackle, like same, similar to the Seahawks. Uh, they, I think they just need it's a lot like of help. It's the one there. place where the Bills and Seahawks like are the same. Like they need some interior right. help. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's just like the Seahawks had a some run game, and Kenneth Walker really, I think, helped make it look like they had a good run game. Yeah. Uh, whereas the Bills just, they knew they couldn't run the ball as well. So they're like, yeah, we're just going to throw it 50 times and see what happens. If Kenneth Walker had the Eagles offensive line, he would have rushed for 2000 yards this season. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> like, did you, you see some of those <laughs> plays of them like pancaking the 49ers defensive line? Uh-huh. Like it yeah. was like their second year guard like pancaked Joey Bosa, yeah. Joey Bosa. Like they just, they yeah. built like a, an amazing offensive line in Philadelphia. Like I'm so and jealous. Like, I just, like I want goal, that so bad. Yeah. And like goal line and like short to go for the first down plays. Like those linemen are on all fours mm-hmm. and just like bear crawling yeah. under you the, get the low and you just yeah. drive. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, I can't say I've really seen that a lot lately, you know, having both hands on the ground for an offensive lineman. So is that a sign of maturity? Like when you, when you're growing up in your football life, you know, when you're a kid, the only players mm-hmm. you really know are like the star players, quarterbacks, wide receivers, stuff like that. Right. Is it a sign of maturity and you're becoming an adult when you're like, yeah, we need guards. <laughs> we, right. we need a good center <laughs> like that's how you know yeah. you're like oh I mean, no <laughs> yeah i think it's uh i think it's i think it's well educated in the in the subject matter yeah. i think kind of helps that oh they just need to get another good wide receiver because then he can get the ball to him like knife his fucking ass is on the ground like <laughs> <laughs> that's just not how it works but right <laughs> yep so both sides of the ball on the, on the line. Um, it's also, I think, still rumored, but had rumors have quiet, kind of quieted down a little bit that the Bills are actually still interested in Saquon Barkley. Um, it would be the right style of running back I think the Bills need. Yeah. And it would allow for the Bills to absolutely cut ties with Devin Singletary. Not that they're not going to if they don't get a running back like Saquon Barkley. Um but that could be a scenario where if they can't get someone like him in free agency, look for it in the look for it in the draft, like probably day two at the latest. 
is my guess. Um, there's just there's not a lot of Saquon Barkley esque running backs in right. free agency. I mean, because you got like the you got your top two options. You got Barkley and Josh Jacobs, but then like the rest of them are all right. like these third down style backs. Yep. Like until you get to like maybe Rashad Penny. Mm-hmm. Like he could be. He's he was he's just injury prone. Same as Barkley though. That's what that's what keeps me away right. from these guys. That's why I just feel like I mean okay you got Deonta Foreman for Carolina. He's a free agent. Yeah, I think he might be a solid, big body up the middle kind of running back that you could probably get for cheap. Which would wouldn't be terrible because you had the Bills had James Cook, and Naeem Hines is more than likely staying there. Right. Like you're Which, looking for that guy who can bully his way through anyone. Yep. And without getting into like big money, mm-hmm. I think Deonta Foreman's probably your best bet on this list. At least, and like, he's a Carolina guy. Yeah. In which we all know the Bills just <laughs> suck everything <laughs> off of the Carolina. Like that's just what they do. Uh, right. I'm just you got Mark Ingram. He's old as shit. You don't want Mark Ingram. No, I don't uh, need that. He's old. Just going, uh, Dearness Johnson from Cleveland, maybe a sleeper free agent this off season. That could be. I mean, he had a decent couple of games. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Boston Scott for Philly. That's a good one. If you play the Giants, you're going to want him. Uh, yep. Rex Burkhead free agent. Interesting. Yeah. No thanks. Uh. Yeah. And then that's yeah, that's all really <laughs> interesting at that point. So, you know, there there's options out there. I, I think Deonta Former would be a solid Yeah. A solid look at for the Bills. Like you let go Singletary, James Cook's your one your right your running back one. Yep. Uh Hines is like your third down guy, and then you bring in Foreman for the big body. And then you go yep. out and obviously you probably need to draft somebody. Right. <laughs> Just in yeah. case. Yep. That's kind of where no, my head's at. That'd be a good strategy, I think. I think that's what they what they should do, but I think they're. I don't think the stars align to get Saquon Barkley because I think he's going to ask for a ton of money. Do you want him? And it would be like money aside. Like let's let's say the Bills had all the cap space in the world, like and they like without a doubt they could he sign. He stayed Barkley. pretty healthy this year, though. Like this is his first year in his whole career besides his rookie year. Like his rookie year, and then like injury, his injury, injury, year, injury, and then this year. Right. Like, but he is, I don't know. Is that just like, it, is that a facade? Just like to get, probably. you know, like to get a good deal. And then like I mean, he I signs his so. big money deal and then he's not healthy again. Like I'd be so <laughs> scared. That's why you don't do this with the running backs. Cause I know everyone right. wants to, everyone fucking wants Josh Jacobs. Everybody wants a Barkley. Right. But you're getting him in what his sixth year after he's, yeah. After everything he's been through, oh god, that scares me so much. And like the amount of money you would drop on him, God, I would, I would, yeah, I would I mean, do it. I mean, I, yeah, that that would be the problem. How much money the Bills are going to drop on him? And you know, you're getting Deonta Foreman for like five million. If that. oh yeah, for sure, probably about five. It, trust me, if the deal's not right, I don't think Brandon Bean was will will pull the trigger on that one. Like. They didn't push the OBJ situation after his, that whole thing. So yeah, true. There's always that trust um, in Bean. He'll do you right. Speaking of OBJ, but not OBJ, um, I think the Bills need to target a couple of wide receivers in the free agency. Uh, there's talks of maybe Cole Beely coming back, which I think is a good move. I think he's looking for another year to try to round out his career and just have another good success successful season um i don't know i think he's he can keep mckenzie off this out of the starlight or spotlight on the field and i think beasley helps shakir get more reps so it's kind of like a like a pat i I don't know i see it as like passing the torch kind of year like, okay, I'm going to mm-hmm. help you get here, but then I'm going to take a step back and you're going to flourish, and here we go. Um, hey, Jay Kumaro was a free agent. I think that's someone you guys got to look at resigning. Um, n- nah, I'm, I'm good. Nah. Isaiah McKenzie's not a free agent. Interesting. 
He is not. Okay, so you got to deal with him unless you trade him. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what the cap hit would be for releasing him. Um, but I think it's a sensible approach in free agency for receiver, but I think another higher focus area that, you know, the Bills need to address in the draft. So the Bills are looking at, you know, if you see like a, a draft needs kind of call article come out, whatever, the Bills should, it should say offensive, offensive line, defensive line, running back and wide receiver. That's pretty much what they need. So it's fair. But yeah, I mean, other than that, what's your opinions on? We don't know asking prices yet, but what's right. your thoughts on DeAndre Hopkins? We all um, know he had a down year. He, he started the year, year on the suspension list. Like he Arizona did. in general was just yep. in shambles this season. We all know what DeAndre Hopkins has the ability to do. Yep. But depending on the asking price, is mm-hmm. it something that you think that they should be looking at? Because they said he's up for he's up. He's they're getting rid of him. They're rebuilt. They're blowing the whole thing up in Arizona. <laughs> so what do you think uh, about that? Um I think it's awesome that the Arizona Cardinals are blowing everything up with Kyler Murray's giant contract that contract they just gave him. Um that's it's just fantastic. Um but for DeAndre Hopkins to maybe come to Buffalo, uh, I think it's really going to be the right price for Brandon Bean in order to consider it. Um, it w- I think it'd be really interesting to see Hopkins across from Diggs. Yeah. Being That'd like, be who, who do you cover then? Like, that makes Gabe Davis the third string receiver. And, like, where do you put him? Like, what if you can offload Gabe, though? <laughs> Like offload Gabe and that, okay like make that. that part of the trade because then you can have Shakir and Beasley in the slot. That's actually not a bad idea. Trade Gabe Davis to a, a rebuilding team. Get DeAndre Hopkins to give you a loaded roster at receiver, which he should be okay to play You'd in like this kind play. of offense. Um, and then kind of like. It's like a minimal approach of kind of putting all the chips on the table, but not putting all the chips on the table. Like, can you give them Gabe and then like this year's second and like a fourth next year? You said this year's second and a fourth? Yeah, this year's second, next year's fourth, and then Gabe. Yeah, I feel like that's Uh, not terrible. It's a little rough around the edges. Like, giving up a second kind of sucks. I feel like the Bills need to get... A draft pick back though. So maybe like you're looking for one this year, like, like a sick, like, like a late pick this year, like a late 2020. Like give me D Hop and a fifth round pick, and I will, and the Bills will give them a second, a sixth, and Gabe Davis. Okay, like a sixth this year, so not even like a next year pick. A, yeah. Okay. Interesting. Okay. Yeah, if you're giving up two draft picks for this year, then yeah, I would ask for a draft pick back. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's fair. All right. I just thought I'd lay that on you because I think, yeah, Diggs and Hopkins, Christ. And then you got you got Shakir and Beasley, and then you got Dawson Knox, obviously. Holy yep. hell, like that would just, that would be disgusting. I mean, there's no reason why the Bills can't have two big names at the wide receiver position. Yeah. Like, yes, playoff Gabe Davis is great. Regular season Gabe Davis is not. Dog. Dog water. But, like, it's Diggs and Davis. There's other teams that have Jalen Waddle and Tyreek Hill. Chris Evans and... Or Mike Evans and Chris Godwin. Yeah. You have Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Tyler Boyd. Like, those are all bigger names. Those mm-hmm. are all productive names. Like... Why can't the Bills have that? <laughs> Why can't we have something nice for once? <laughs> <laughs> I just want a shiny trophy. Like it's time for like I think I don't think anyone is anymore, but uh it's yeah, it's time to stop pretending like Stefan Diggs and Gabe Davis is like some deadly duo. It's just not right. Like I think Gabe yep. Davis ended the season with like a fifty two percent catch rate. That's mm-hmm. that's just no. Not good. Absolutely not. 
Uh, and I like where Shakir's going. They really showcased him down the stretch this season, so I yep. love that. And then having Beasley back, he obviously showed he still has some spunk. I think yep. those four guys heading into next season would just be ruthless. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, I think that's it for uh, free agency offseason stuff right now. Yeah. All right. Plus, they still got Jamison Crowder. Or he's technically a free agent, so I mean, it's at least something to think about. I mean, if you want to bring him right. back. Right. I mean, we were, yeah, they really didn't get to see him very much. But yeah, it's unfortunate. It I be, think he could have made be, a big difference. It could be maybe it's like a, a vet minimum, like you owe us kind of thing. Right. Yeah. You, you're you going to take like $2.1 <laughs> million this year and just shut the hell up and do what we say. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah so kind of similar outlooks for the offseason i mean yeah offensive and defensive lines on the interior and then you know yep. add a weapon or two and you know yeah so it's not entirely different it's just like the approach is different that's where it, like right the bills have to be more careful because of their cap space situation and yep. like they're like fighting for a super bowl and then like the seahawks are kind right. of just like Fuck it. We got seventy million dollars. Like <laughs> seventy million dollars and no expectations. Like let's just do it. <laughs> like that's that's where they're at. Mm. I love it. I love the freedom of that. It's just it's so mm. much more relaxing and fun. And then like Bills fans are over here oh my God, just sweating. Like, oh my god, what's the next move gonna be? <laughs> we gotta make the right decision. Like, oh my god, what's uh, I'm gonna be on like lack of sleep when they're doing all these moves. I'm not gonna know what what half of is going on. You're gonna be in shambles. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, so we can talk about the Super Bowl next week because we'll have a whole week to talk about the Super Bowl. But this weekend we have <sighs> we have the thing that they like to call the thing that they like the, they changed the name of it and they added the word games to it now and to make it more fun to make it more appealing, but it's really not I, like I have never been so in favor of just not having the pro bowl anymore. Right. Like just, just give them the accolade if you want, or just stick with the all pro stuff. Right. And then just call it a day. Like, can we just like, not do this do, anymore? Like, do you not make it a game and make it like a skills competition? Well, they they do that still, which right, which I guess like, I'm fine with the skill stuff. Like that that's fun for people. I I don't know. Yeah. Like whatever, you can go do that and have some fun. But like they turned the the game into flag football, like the actual game. Right. They li- like everyone said it was a it was just t- it was a joke before. Oh, they don't even tackle. Might as well just be flag football. They literally went and made it flag football. <laughs> we were joking. You don't actually do right. that. Yeah. You're making a, a mockery of the sport by doing that. Mm-hmm. I hate it. I hate it so much. <laughs> <sighs> I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, Josh Allen hates it too. Oh my God, Josh Allen cannot because... hate this more. He 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 declined to play in the Pro Bowl, which allowed uh, Snoop Huntley to be moved up to the Pro Bowl because Josh Allen's playing in the Pebble Beach Pro Am. I saw oh. Snoop Huntley's stats, but I want to pull him up again just to make sure <laughs> that I got him right. Because holy fuck, <laughs> this <laughs> this man is a Pro Bowler this year. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's see here. Uh, th- this is the 2022 season stats for Tyler Huntley, who is a pro pro bowler. This man was decided to be one of the better quarterbacks in the AFC. All right. <laughs> 75 passing attempts, 112 completions for 67%, 658 yards, two touchdowns, and three interceptions. That's a pro bowler right there. That's a pro bowler. <laughs> when I saw this, when the, like, uh-huh. like I would, I, I have always been like, not a fan of the pro bowl. Okay. Mm-hmm. Like pretty much forever. Like I th- always thought the skill stuff was kind of fun. Dodgeball, throwing balls, whatever the hell it, it's fun. That's fine. I'm probably not going right. to watch it, but it's fun. Mm-hmm. When I saw that he was named to the pro bowl and saw his stats, that's when I officially knew that this is just a joke. Like this is officially like right. they're like they're just pretending like this is a professional thing mm-hmm. now. Two touchdowns, three interceptions. Yeah. 
he's in the Pro Bowl. It's a joke. It's an unmitigated joke. So let's mm-hmm. just call it what it is. Might as well just invite everyone down. Let's just invite the whole NFL. Who you want to you want right. to come? Come on down. Let's just have some fun. Who gives a shit at this point? They should have. They should have. They get nominated Skylar Thompson. That, yeah, that I mean, at least he like played in the playoff game. You know, he right. He played well. I I think Skylar Thompson in like two games has better stats than uh, Huntley had in hum- Huntley. six games played. I think yeah. Skylar Thompson beat him in stats in two. <laughs> All right, so this is just this is just a disaster, absolute disaster. Yeah. Um. Yeah, Josh Allen's not going. He has better things to do, eh? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, who wouldn't want to call in sick to work and go golfing at one of the best golf courses <laughs> in the country? I mean, I mean, this is the actual pro am. So, did they did they do matchups yet? Who's he playing with? I don't did... know who he's playing with. I know he was playing. He played around today. Um, I saw he played the iconic hole number seven, and uh, he he birdied it. Ooh. He so he's like good ball. at golf too. He's like he put oh he's decent. Yeah, he put the ball just short of the pin on the green, and then put it in on one putt. So um, I don't you. know who he's pairing up with. I forget who it was last year. Um, I think it was Kevin Bill Murray. Or Ooh. oh no, maybe not Bill Murray and Josh Allen headline celebrities. Oh okay, never mind. Hold on. Oh uh, okay. Uh, those are all the pros competing. Oh, this doesn't have it. I'm, I'm going to take too long to look. I'm not even going to bother. That'll take right. too long, but I'd like to. But know. yeah, so uh, yeah, he's going to have fun there this weekend. Um, I think one thing that is going to be, I think it could make it fun, more and more fun, if people are watching, is it's Manning versus Manning. Yeah, they're kind of entertaining. They're like an entertaining duo, I guess. Right. Are they doing like draft style rosters again? Like they draft their players? Are they doing that? I don't know. I think they're just doing AFC and NFC. Okay. Because like I, I, I thought it was. I didn't hate the draft style. Like just kind of like pick from anyone. Right. Like, I I wasn't a hater of that because at least it yep. spiced things up. Like you get like random people playing with people, and it's like it could you know kind of be entertaining. Um, mm-hmm. but I think, yeah, I think Manning and Manning, that'll be, that'll be fun. I mean, in all yeah. honesty, like I say that I hate the Pro Bowl, but every year I end up just turning it on. Even if it's only for like 30 <laughs> minutes, I will right. turn it on at some point mm-hmm. just so I can like kind of get a general opinion of what I'm looking at. <laughs> so I know right. what to talk about, but, uh, my overall feelings are, this is just, <laughs> God. it's going to be horrible like you, you like you, you every single year you always see that sean taylor hit on the punter who fakes the punt and he just like murders him oh yeah brian mormon yeah and he just Those murders punches. him like if they did that yeah. today in the pro bowl you'd be arrested <laughs> like that would be attempted murder yeah like, even back then they didn't like it but it's just like right. hey, well, i guess that's football you do that today you'd probably be fine you'd be suspended like mm-hmm. not even joking they would probably suspend you <laughs> like we're not yeah. doing that in the pro bowl Learn your lesson. <laughs> uh, yeah. Are you, so, are you planning on watching? I mean, like, what? Like, I might have it on TV. Yeah. But like, am I fully paying attention to it? Probably not. Plus, isn't is it in Hawaii still? No, it's in uh, Las Vegas. Oh, they're moving. Okay, it's in. It Vegas hasn't now. been in Hawaii. I feel like in a couple, a few years. Like tells you as much that it just tells you how much I understand what's going on with the Pro Bowl. I thought it was been in Hawaii like this whole time. No. I think it needs to go back to being after the Super Bowl and go back to Hawaii. Yeah, but I, I, they're trying to fill the gap. I, I I get that. Yeah, but like I I get I would guess it would be I feel like it'd be more fun if it was at after the Super Bowl. Like it's kind of like a season ending party, you know. Right. It's just kind of like we have the Pro Bowl, and then like you completely forget about anything that happened Pro Bowl related because we're moving mm-hmm. on to the Super Bowl. Which maybe they yep. like it like that. Maybe they do that on maybe, purpose. Maybe yeah. they're like, okay, we know this is a dog shit product, so let's just like smush it in here, and then everyone will forget about it. What if we had an All Star break instead? Like in the middle of the season. Middle of the season. Whoa. 
like could you imagine how like the people that would make the all-star team in like the, the early part of the season might not be the best players at the end of the season yeah man that would, that makes me nervous <laughs> I, well like what like because they're in the middle of the season I know, like, I know, like basketball, baseball, they all take the same risk. But like in football, like right. you're gonna go play a contact football game in the middle of the season that has no bearing on the rest of the season. Oof. Right. I don't know. I'm on the fence. I like the idea more than the Pro Bowl. Right. And like maybe the like. Oh. We're gonna get off topic. This is gonna be like a whole other like segment. <laughs> but like, what if you do that? What if you do that? Uh-huh. And then, you know, I don't know if I was talking about it with you or Matt, somebody. I was talking to somebody about this. It was Matt. About, like, instead of, ho- like, a random city hosting the Super Bowl, mm-hmm. it's like one of the teams actually hosts the Super Bowl. The team that gets to host it, that conference won the All-Star game in the middle of the season. So, like, if the oh. NFC All-Star team won, the NFC team hosts the Super Bowl. Because now it has meaning. <laughs> To pick the home or away team. Yeah. Right. I like it. I think I think that 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 might be something. I think that's something. I kinda wanna ask the community about that. Like that'd be fun. Yeah. So yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I just randomly thought about that because of the <laughs> the conversation I was having with Matt. We were talking mm-hmm. about like not doing neutral sites anymore. Well right. like how do you decide who gets it? I think that would be, that would give the game meaning, but having mm-hmm. in the middle of the season, that's a tough sell. It's like for the players, yeah. that's a tough sell. Right. I mean, I know they want to add a couple more weeks to this the season, so like, you could see, like the the break in the middle being as like a a good option. Mm-hmm. But I think you'd have to add a couple more weeks to the regular season to make it work. Yeah. Like, well, if you get rid of the preseason entirely, that frees up three weeks. So you mm-hmm. can, like, everyone gets their first buy, and then you have the all-star break, and then your second buy. There's your three weeks. Yeah. Well, either that or... You do. You still only do one bye week, but everyone gets that All Star week off. All Star break, yeah. So you know it could be either you go the first half of the season All Star break and then have another bye week in the second half, mm-hmm. or you you know have that bye in the first half of the season, have the All Star, and then have to go the long stretch. Yeah. You know, it's give interesting and take. ideas. Yeah. It's very interesting ideas. I'm, I still think it's a tough sell to have like an extra game that has almost no bearing on most of the teams in the NFL. Right. But I think it's interesting. I think it's a fun idea. Mm-hmm. I definitely think yeah. it's more fun than the Pro Bowl. This all comes back to just the Pro Bowl being a meaningless, meaningless bullshit game. You can't <laughs> even call it a game anymore. It's just like an activities fair for NFL right. players. Yep. It, it it changes that and gives it meaning at that point. So, yeah. Um, and then we will explore the Super Bowl next week. Mm-hmm. Find something to talk about Seahawks or Bills related. We'll figure it out. But uh, yep. mainly focusing on our Eagles and Chiefs matchup. Yeah, week. buddy. That's that'll be the season. The NFL will yeah. be over after that week. So, um, happy retirement to Tom. We'll see you next season when you're in somebody's training camp because you can't fool us. <laughs> and this has been another episode of Fans of the Weas. Uh, we have been your hosts. And Durf. And Dylan. Go Hawks. Go Bills.